Hi folks, welcome once again to the Gaz Lab. And today I'm going to be playing with my 705, which I've finally picked up, and I'll show you it here. There you go, here it is. Um, I'm mainly a digital operator. I, I, I can't, I'm not into voice. Um, apart from the odd bit of two meters and uh, 70 sems and occasionally you might find me well maybe once or twice a year I'll do the the two meter activity contest if I can be bothered to put the antennas up and that's just a little thing I will mention right now I don't have any antennas up um, it's winter time the garden has gone into hibernation um, I've got some work um, that I've, uh, I'm doing in the garden, uh, which I need to uh, crack on with, so I don't need the antennas in the way. And um, so, yeah, it's been a bit of a, a palaver, really, out there. So antennas have come down. The DX Commander is down. Um, fantastic antenna, that. Um, and right now, all I've got out there is a 9 to 1 Unun with a bit of wire strapped around the garden fence. Um, yes. Anyway, what do you need to do to the 705 to get it to work with HRD and WSJTX? The answer is not very much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to emulate a 7100, which in is as simple as changing the CIV address to 88H. And what that means is that you need to tell the software where to find it. Now the default um, CIV address for the 705 is A4H. I think that's correct. So you need to write that down because you will need to go back to that as the software catches up um, with the, the release of the radio of course. So first thing you're going to need to do is change that. So let's go into the menu on the radio and you just simply touch that and you go in into set okay and you're going to need to go into connectors now first thing you're going to need to do is what well, on what i did anyway i just shut the microphone off so in here by default this is set to mic usb so we track back out of that data off mod and it's under mod input and you get to that via these up and down arrows from the CIV page. So if you see the CIV, you need just to scroll up one page. Or if you see this SP jack function, you need to scroll down one page and you'll see that the mod input is there. Everything else you can pretty much leave as it is. Now we want to scroll back down again. We need the CIV function here. And the first thing we're going to do, okay, is we need to make sure that these are all on, uh, that one's off. And we need to make sure that the CIV transceive is on and we need to just check that. Normally that would say A4H, but I, like I said before, I want to emulate the 7100 version 2 and that is an 88H. So we can then come back out of that, come back out of that, out of that. And then that is your radio done. Nothing else to do to it. Um, well there might be one or two things but we'll see this is early days for me I'm learning um, and as I'm learning I'm showing you as I, I picked it up um, top tip um, I've left my manuals in the box and you do need the advanced manual so download the advanced manual the PDF document get it open Adobe um, Acrobat you can actually search it so you can actually ask the PDF a question and it should help you at least locate it in the manual. Um, I can't be bothered with the um, with the paper manuals anymore. You find yourself actually, you know that uh, paper has uh, sort of come to an end when you, for you that is, um, when you sit there looking at the page and you start trying to zoom in. I think that is the, um, the, the, the clue that uh, it may be too late for you right now then um so what do we do next well we need to set the software up so if we go over to my screen you can see here that i've got digimaster 780 super sweeper running um and it should follow it should follow the band and we should see some data any minute now about sort of somewhere around there and there's some data coming in okay now that's probably going to be ft8 
um, which I'll talk about in a second. And there you go, good old DM780s having a go at uh, decoding it. But anyway, there you go. Right, so I'm going to come out of this one and we're going to minimize that one down. So, it's, oh, wrong one. Um, so there you go. So in this, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me, let me close all this down. So, and we'll start afresh. So if I double click on that, you can see here that um, what I've done is I've set up an, an IC70100 version two. Now I should be able to, if I tell you what I do, if I remove it for you, um, yeah, I want to remove it. So let's go new. So we're going to select from here, we're going to select icon. And from here, we'll select the 7100 version 2. Com port, again, you can do this via um, your device manager. Um, and you uh, you can just type in the search bar on Windows and or whatever it is on your system. Get into device manager, open up the com ports, okay, and then find the USB serial device and I've just chosen the first one because it was logical to me that I'll try the first one first so there you go shove that in there the com speed I would say on auto detect and the CIV address wants to be 88H in fact actually the version 2 is 90H by the looks of it well whatever as long as they're the same it doesn't matter um, and then we we'll say connect and then voila and now when I change the radio you'll see the screen changes and then um, vice versa so if I then go to the radio you'll notice that when I change the software that changes and I can also change things like the, the volume of the radio remotely, all from the computer, and yeah, do all the good stuff. And then what I can do then also is from here, I can use DM780, and you can see the digital stuff coming in. Um, actually, that looks like some form of uh, PSK. Um, the other thing you might need to do is if you go into, if you've got no waterfall here, you might need just to pop into options and you need to go to sound card and you need to tell it which of these microphones is which. Now I've got a lot of sound cards attached to my computer um, and I need to choose one. So what I've done here is you use the USB audio codec and again here you use the USB audio codec again. So both the microphone and speakers need to be USB audio codec. The other thing is as well, if you want to use um, HRD, you need to configure your PTT. Now, um, this unfortunately will need some fiddle farting. Okay, so probably what I would do in the first instance is um, via PTT, via Vox, but you're going to need to probably have a little bit of a fiddle around with um, with that just to get that to work. Um, but once you've got the receive part working, the rest of it is pretty much just chipping away at it. And it'll be different for you um, than it is for me. But it is worth just configuring that up um, to um, to work. Um, well, you'll need to if you want to use PT, uh, sorry, uh, PSK or um, Ritty or whatever it might be. Um, also, they've changed something in um, HRD fairly recently. It looks as if the SSTV add-in is not installed, so you need to install and do that separately. And I love uh, the SSTV stuff. That's really good fun. Uh, be a bit careful with the SSTV. Um, if you've got your kids there, you never know what's going to, to uh, pop up and uh, sometimes it can be um, really quite revealing um, so do do take care if if you have your uh, if your kids are uh, with you when you're um, on digital modes and on SSTV because you have no control of what comes through and it shocked me uh, one or two of them right so let's close that one down Okay, and let's look at WSJT. Now, um, WSJT uh, X is 
a fairly complicated program if it wants to misbehave okay and well anyway radio configuration stays the same we just open um, WSJT up and I'll just take you over to the desktop um, and let's go in there wait for it to open okay and you should see it's not working so oh dear or is it oh, it is working so what you need to do here you need to go into file settings and then go to radio and then you need to tell it various things so you need to tell it what com port it's on well we already know that it is on com port 8 so tell it com port 8 the board rate can be left at 115 and there you go i left everything else as default um, i left dtr and rts as off and i've left this ptt method on as cat Everything else, I sort of changed the mode. I changed the data packet, and I I changed the split operation to fake it. You can do a test on the on the cat connection, and you can do a test on the PTT. Okay, and it lights up red, but actually it is working. So, um, I will show you that right now. Um, if I can do it, how did I do it? Like that. So you'll notice the TX light at the top here when I press the PTT it lights up okay so that is pretty much it there is nothing else really much to do with WSJTX except for one last thing which I always forget about is the audio again you need to make sure that you've set it up to use the USB audio codec okay if you're not um, if you're not getting any any um, decoding going on then you really need to make sure that that actually is all configured correctly and now it should by rights it should work if I select that it should go to 14 the radio has indeed gone to um, 1474 as has the software and we've now started to get some stations if I wanted to, I could enable the TX and then um, do whatever the FT8 sort of does. Um, but that is essentially it for today, I think. Um, I just wanted to show you that um, because I, I I do hear this quite a lot with, uh, with, with people trying to get this connected. Of course, it's not available as yet on WSJTX. Um, at the time of doing this video, it may very well be. If if um, you're watching this video, everything else stays the same except the default value for the 705 is A4H. You just need to make sure that you select the correct um, CIV um, address in the radio. So if you've got a newer version of WSJTX, if, it, if I'm speaking to the future, <laughs> um, change the radio back to A4H select 705 from the menu and it will work and the vice versa for hrd and you'll be away so and while we've been chatting here there's a few more stations coming in and um, you can just see them all just popping up so there you go thank you for watching um really do appreciate the really lovely comments that some of you guys are are making it's very humbling um and yeah and i do appreciate the uh, the subs and the thumbs up and uh, all that sort of stuff uh, and it's always good to um yeah it's always good to get feedback when you know to know that i'm doing something right or wrong um or whatever really and I, like i said before in these things i just try and keep things as um friendly and um just yeah it's it's more of a sort of like a ham radio vlog than than an instructional thing nowadays um, although, uh, you know, I do want to sort of uh, maybe, you know, do a little more in the way of instructional videos sort of going forward. But I, I don't want to put a make a structure to it because it's no fun then. It's, um, it all becomes a little bit, you know, you have, there is an expectation and I don't want there to be an expectation for anybody. It's just, uh, you know, just fun. And uh, as I say, this year, I think is, is really, really 
you know blown fun out of the water i think uh, it uh, we definitely need a bit of cheering up so jokes much appreciated in the comments <laughs> right thank you very much see you soon thanks for watching ta-da